Hey, so uh, this week's is all about Keith Lockhart. So we're going to have a little fun on the forensic happy hour. And you'll find out that typically it's one beer, and now it's one and a half because Keith is talking. All right, enjoy. Cheers. I will certainly cheers with you. Fantastic. Thank you. Of course. I appreciate you uh, obviously coming on to the, uh, the happy hour. So the first thing, though, is I'm sure everyone that's watching this knows exactly who you are. But so a couple of things, and because we don't get a whole bunch into a lot of the company stuff, but I want you to tell us who's, who's Keith Lockhart. Who, I mean, who are you? Where do you start? What are those things? Well, yeah, we take one bottle away to be get that Keith Lockhart versus the two bottle. <laughs> Well, so it's a it, you thank me for coming on here, but I kind of have to, right? Because I work here, and you said come on here, so that's always good. Uh, no, I actually told you I want to crash this one day, so it's fun to come do it for real. Um, who's Keith Lockhart? So Keith Lockhart runs training for Oxygen Forensics, and you know it's funny if you've heard me speak about my time at Oxygen anywhere in the last year. It's interesting because I say my last job really prepared me for this one. And the fact that uh, I worked a lot with database tools and detective happens to sit on a database with all of its data. And I go crazy, happy, fun about that. And uh, we've gone to, <laughs> Lee, I don't, know how to, I don't know how to say nice. I feel like I'm taking advantage of a bad situation because I haven't been on a plane since March 13th. <laughs> I'm vocally happy about that. And that sounds right. terrible compared to what's going on. But you're right. If somebody's watching this and knows me, they're probably laughing a little bit at and with me because I haven't been on a plane since March 13th. You neither. Well, I don't know when you were last, but um, yeah. certainly not crazy uh, traveling like we used to. So, yeah, I'm the training guy here, and I've been a training guy in the DFIR industry for 20 years now, it turns out. It's throwing my mortality in my face. Had we had this conversation 20 years ago, I would still have a ponytail, no kids, be on a plane all the time. And uh, living it up, I suppose. I'm living yeah, so up. That's a crazy thing. <laughs> yeah, the crazy thing is, I, I think that we have probably known each other in some format. I mean, since well, probably 20 years. I don't. Know. I'm trying to think. With Iasis, I know, and I've told some <laughs> stories about Iasis. So that was a long time ago. And you did have your ponytail. And I think that yeah. it was either the year that I was there or the year after that. The shirts with um, that, that, Star Wars that, shirts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wow. Well, and I, I gave it to, I think I gave it to you. I, so, I think I gave it to you sometimes. I should have put that background up. I was toying with backgrounds. Yeah. Skype's going to add a crazy background now, right? And I have my uh, my Westworld one up right now because I'm I'm revolting against Westworld being over for the season. Uh, it's a lot of binge watching going on right now, right? If I'm if I'm not editing a webinar, I'm binge watching something else. <laughs> too much TV time. Wow, too much video time. But yeah, you know, I miss IASIS. Uh, gosh, all the we were just talking about that today with somebody with that being canceled, and every other conference because it's conference season. We should be all over the place right now, right? Yeah. That's tough. Sorry, go ahead. I interrupted you, but that yeah, happen. no. So, so you're you started in law enforcement side of it. When you were in the law enforcement side of it, were you doing digital forensics, or how got you? How did you get into really? And if I, I'm not going to say what you did, but I believe it was with computer forensics that you started. In, no, uh, listen. I'll say what I did. It's a it's a story that uh, I was a doper, and uh, that's what we're here to do. Tell stories, man. That's what we're here to do. Yeah, I tell great. I got, I got a ton of them. Got a million of them. So it's it's really interesting because back in those days, now we're back probably 25 years ago, we had our secret house out in the woods type thing. And I, gosh, I, I would just flip out if anybody from the old crew would watch this and call. Uh, but I remember I was that guy that, oh, I could turn the printer on. So I was the tech support for everybody. And we had no money. And we had this old dilapidated little hideout. And uh, we had this old computer. And I remember installing Windows 95 on it with like 39 floppy diskettes, three and a quarter inch floppies. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. And, you know, I think we had a dot matrix printer bzz, 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 across the lines. But during the course of those three or four years undercover doing that work, our informant started saying, hey, Lee's keeping the stuff in his computer in the kitchen. I'm like, oh, really? Now, this was the day when I went to the, but what? gosh, it wasn't a Best Buy, some kind of electronic store. And got my first real 386-33, I think it was, something ridiculous. And uh, turned into having two drives so I could run DOS in one world and Windows in the other because I didn't like Windows. And uh, it got to the point where 
we would take our, our evidence. We'd, so we started seizing computers. Hey, uh, prosecutor of Portage County, can we do this? Oh, yeah, great. And we didn't know what to do with them, so I would take them up to BCI in uh, Cleveland-ish area and never get them back. <laughs> so at one point, the chief's like, look, you idiots, why don't you go figure out what to do on your own so you can actually use your evidence when it comes time? I'm like, that's a great idea. So National White Collar Crime Center came to Akron, Ohio, to the jail. It was really interesting because some guys broke into my car that weekend. They happened to be in the jail. When I got to go to the jail for class, we had some fun times there. Uh, but it, And I'll rat him out just because this is kind of a, a public story. Chris Samft taught that class with uh, Bill Crane and Jack O'Brien. Gosh, these names are totally flooding me. So my lieutenant was with me, sitting beside me, because he ran the task force and he was there. And I was having a blast, man. We were using disk edit from Norton, you know, back in the day, looking at Hex and stuff. And I said to Chris Samt as he walked by, hey, man, how do you get a job with you guys? And uh, he says, hey, we're hired, and you should come down and, and apply. And my lieutenant's like, shut up, you know, you're not going anywhere. And that was that was January of, gosh, 1996, maybe-ish. And uh, by June, I was living in West Virginia, working at National White Collar Crime Center. So I went from doping to computering to don't know what to do let's figure it out had so much fun figuring it out went somewhere to teach i'd been teaching dope stuff to newly assigned dope guys for a couple of years in ohio and that was i loved the, the teaching bug right i'm like man if i can do this with computer stuff at the same time whoa right so, <laughs> so that's what happened. so to yeah to go back on to that um you know obviously working for a smaller agency and then um transitioning and having to say drive your evidence or have someone you get kind of tired of that do you kind of see that? Is that still an issue? Well, <laughs> I don't think it's anywhere the issue it was back then because now we have things like Dropbox and FTPs and real internet and things that we just didn't have back then. I mean, look, it was my dope car, so <laughs> I felt cool driving my evidence up in a Ford Probe, rock on, my GT Ford Probe. Um, but, no, that's a totally different environment now, right? The, the media, the medium by which data travels, yeah, I don't think that's an issue anymore. I'll complain probably till the end of my days about backlog and collaboration and having the right people do the right work you know another happy day uh coming to oxygen knowing that detective has a viewer right and we can get the right people doing the right review because that problem exists everywhere doesn't matter what kind of data it is doesn't matter what agency what language all over the world i run into that same problem and so we have a conversation a conversation i had last week had to do with the transition from people doing because uh, Lexus and I both, you know, started with the computer forensic side and moved on to the mobile side of it. Um, and so t tell me about that transition, uh, because you kind of were living that, right? So dealing with computers and being with the network side of it and then transitioning into, uh, you know, the mobile side of it. Pretty much everyone is like, I hate mobile phones. When you come in from the, from the for computer side, I think just because it's not as easy as just plugging it in and imaging the drive like you would. So, so tell me from your personal experience, the kind of transition. No, you are so right. And I've got several examples. I've got student examples and teaching examples. Let me start with the teaching one. Cause I would go into a class assuming, you know, incorrectly, as it turns out most of the time that all the people in there had evolved from the computer forensic world to the mobile. And most of the time the answer is hell no. He just got this phone last night. We're trying to figure out what to do. Oh, and, you know, it would stun me because I would be talking, like, we search in hex. What's hex? Or we search with a regular expression. What's that? Or, you know, what's a hash value? Things that I thought were just foregone conclusions are all brand new again to folks coming through our stuff. And in the same vein, I mean, one of the examples I had for you, we were talking about the tablet we, we sell at the company. I'm like, why has this only got so much memory and blah, blah? And the answer is like, yeah, dude, it's not that that's slowing you down. It's that <laughs> you know the port i'm like oh yeah you just got to start thinking different and I, there's several examples like that where i've had to switch my mindset a little bit because i don't need that anymore i gotta worry about this or you know i've got this this box right now where well well so i come from a world where index searching was key right 200 billion items versus 200,000, and you know I'm, my data sets are a lot smaller the things i had to accommodate before i don't necessarily have to accommodate now however the complexity of acquisition is completely different. <laughs> it's not just a hard drive hooking up to a write blocker anymore by any stretch of the imagination. But I'll tell you, over time, I mean, I love this industry when I got into it because the learning curve is straight up. I love to learn new stuff like this. And I was that guy. After 16 years in computer forensics-ish, 
I was like, gosh, yeah, you guys do this for Well, Lee, we worked it. You do it, Lee. I'd get your stupid yeah. phone away from me or whatever. Uh, but now I'm like straight up in the air all the time, you know. And if it's not technology doing it, it's our software doing it. Either one of them is constantly putting me up in the air. So, so let's talk about this. Transition. So so let's talk about the technology. So the technology that you see, and I, I kind of ask everyone, obviously, because we're all in this stage, mm-hmm. right, this whole isolation type stage. And so, so, so talk to me about technology as a, you know, when we come out of that, we're all slowly coming out of that. What is, do you think that people or people, the curve of understanding technology is going to, is, or has increased um, uh, on that? And then if it has increased, is that mean more work for those people that might be doing examinations, right? People are utilizing more electronic products. You know, they might understand things a little bit more. I mean, what's your take on people's, not only their sort of consumption and understanding of technology because of COVID, um, and then those on the investigative side, do you think that there's going to be an uptick in investigations? Well, <laughs> let's start with the people. So my, I live the meme where my nine-year-old daughter knows more about Zoom than I know about Chime. And, you know, Dad, shut up. I'm doing my dance class because she's using Zoom in the, cl- in the living room. And I'm like, I'm making a sandwich for lunch. Are you kidding me? You just said that to me? I- so there's a lot of people certainly not learning more about technology than they knew three months ago. Um, but at the same time, all the bad things aren't stopping just because there's COVID, you know. And Lee, we deal in high technology. So high technology is how many, how Zoom got crushed right out of the gate. Let's have, I'm making numbers up, five clients and go to five million clients and get hacked and we're just not prepared for any of that. So obviously crime's still happening, you know, and it's probably happening. Oh, here's a vaccine for COVID, I mean, whatever scam you could think of. It's all still out there. That work's not going away. However, one of the killers is, I think there's two sides of the coin. One is people can stay home and binge their technology and learn it more. And the other is, I got, oh my gosh, I've had so many people, I've talked to so many people that said, look, man, we're the cyber dudes and we're down guarding the National Armory in these cots. This sucks because <laughs> they're not doing their work anymore. Uh, we faced everything from, oh, procurement people aren't working anymore or, what's essential and non-essential, but I know some groups and labs and teams that were doing high technology crime work that weren't for months. And I don't even matter of fact, I should call and get some updates because they're out on the street again, putting on things that didn't fit and doing things they didn't know how to do anymore. <laughs> but just because that, so there could be some things just sitting there doing nothing because those guys have been reassigned right now, right. you know, crazy. So, so I always want to bring a positive, right, to the story of and maybe the negative of everyone is kind of just in, in limbo, um, you know, for whatever matter. I'm the majority of it is because this is something that's, uh, you know, pretty interesting and, uh, you know, working from home. So, but I like, you have to think of it a positive. So what, what's a positive that you take? It doesn't have to be another it work, it, it, you know, it could be anything really. What, what is it that, that you look or, you know, that people you want to know that there's always a positive to the story? A, a positive to any particular aspect, like working at home or just uh, COVID on the whole? Yeah, no, what is, <laughs> the positive, you, you, Keith, what is the positive uh, that, that you that you see if based upon, you know, not being on the road, right? Uh, so, I mean, what is that positive? Yeah, I'll tell you three. Um, one is a work-related one first, and that is, so, look, I was in, I was at headquarters teaching the week that, the 30 day travel ban to Europe conversation started on that Wednesday night. And uh, I'm like, wow, that's crazy. And then about an hour later, the Utah Jazz guy was diagnosed right before the game. They canceled the whole NBA season. And we had four guys from uh, overseas in class that week. And I was thinking to myself, I got to get my butt home. Holy crap. So I flew home on Friday the 13th. And that was it. <laughs> Lucky for me. But that's the part. That's where I'm taking advantage of the bad situation by being home. Um, that's a work one that turns into a personal one because now I'm home. However, it was Monday morning that rolls back to work one, and I don't know, what was it, 6.45? Ring, ring, ring. Hey, it's Lee. I'm like, yeah, what? What? That's too early for this call. You're like, yeah, let's get mobile ramped up, or a remote training ramped up. And I'm like, yep, on it. And now I can go back and say my last job prepared me really well for this one because we had a great remote capability back then, and that's a great remote capability now right here. So I think that was a – I take that as, as a – I. I cherish it as a benefit and a lucky, a lucky thing for me to be able to satisfy your call Monday morning and the company from a training perspective, being able to help people do what they got to do despite what's going on around us. And the, uh, the third thing is again, binging technology, but having more time to be home and do it. 
I mean, you know, one airplanes used to be my my cherished spot because I could get a ton done without people bothering me, uh, like they would. <laughs> that sounds really bad, but you know what I mean. Get a ton done in an uninterrupted uninterrupted chunk of time. Um, and now, you know, I got a lot of uninterrupted chunks of time. If I'm not doing a whatever it is, I can sit down and I got all my stuff around me. You know, when you're out of an element in a hotel or on a plane or in another office, you don't have this computer with four monitors or that table full of test machines and phones and just all the all your junk's right there all the time. So, you know, it's it's a large benefit around a lot of things. And I routinely get yelled at, come up here for dinner. I'm like, I'll be there in a minute. Being in this environment lets me get a lot more done on my own terms versus, you know, having to live on other time slots or people's needs or whatever. Right. So selfish. So you, yeah. Well, no, I mean, I, I think that's, I, I, there's a lot of positives, right? So if you, if you talk about on the remote stuff, so something that I, that I've been talking to people about and that I'm seeing whether it be for work or, or not for work, you know, some of the positives obviously that I'm seeing on the remote side of it, is it, it can be positive and negative, right? I, I think that a lot of, of, of the, the trainings, uh, you know, forensic training, all other training, people are becoming a custom technology and that one, they know they're capable of it and they're gonna enjoy it. You know, for example, you know, Twitter, everyone can work from home um, for as long as they ever wanna do it. Um, so do you see on the training side um, is, is that people, find it's, it's acceptable, and especially with the hands-on. You know, hands-on is always the best. You, there's really, you, you have to do it, especially on the mobile side of it. But you think that there is, uh, you know, on, on the remote side of it, that it's, it's going to turn into really more remote because of live online, right? You have a real instructor. I mean, you can touch and feel it. You're going through all of this. You don't have to have your own computer. You can log into remote computers. So do you see that? Do you see that more as, you know, moving towards that? Than or still having on-site classes. No, listen, those are. <laughs> who didn't recognize that ringtone, right? Uh, that is an altruistic fact. People will come to a remote training environment and never go back to a classroom. So while it's great because nobody has to travel, <laughs> it doesn't work. It literally doesn't work unless you have the interaction capability of working with the student machine whether it's on a monitor with a bunch of little windows where you can see or they share your screen or having laptops right here all around me because we have our labs, you have to have that element. That's where that's where it falls down if you're just a talking head in the WebEx. However, Lee, the biggest benefit I think is even bigger than that is the force multiplication of the outreach remote training allows us. I have people come in here. And I told you about that guy the other day from my Nairobi. 7 p.m., gunshots in the air, and he's like, yeah, let's go. And I'm like, you're crazy, man. Doesn't matter what time of day, you know, and we're doing our, our uh, train the training thing in a couple weeks. And we, I said, look, we're starting at 8 Mountain Time, folks, and we're going to stop at a reasonable break point each day to get some work done and some sleep because we have people from all around the world in there. So the outreach capability from the high technology perspective is just amazing. I think so many people can participate in so many more things than they could have before because of that. Now, you're not shaking hands anymore. Like, you would, wouldn't be shaking hands anyway right now, but... You know, I told you about that thing where, like, kind of like we're doing, let's put the blow-up dolls around the table, tape an iPad where the face is, everybody call in and drink beer together or something. It's kind of like that. But the outreach capability has just been astonishing. It's something we could never accomplish unless we had this capability. Being forced into it's tough, but, I mean, we're rolling with it now crazy, and I think everybody's on board. And I think you're yeah. going to see a lot more because they just won't go back to class. The money, the time, the, the caution, you know, everything that would prevent that is all there. Yeah, quite honestly, I think that, you know, a lot of, of businesses, especially when you start talking about business, brick and mortar businesses who are housing, you know, 10, 50, 100 employees that um, one see, you know, the bottom line not dropping, but they're, wow, hey, you know what, we're doing doing well right now with no one necessarily at our office and the production that I'm seeing from people you know, far exceeds that because no one's sitting and talking. So, again, it's one of those things is that, I mean, are we going to see empty buildings? Are we going to see empty classrooms? Are we going to see empty that? Because it's, I mean, it's, it's one of those, obviously, we are forced into this, but I think that, that a lot, especially on the technology side, people have adapted to it, at least on the training and the business side of it. I think that those people who, who have to go and do collections, you know, it's, it's still, you know, allowing remote collections or being able to go and do that. That's still kind of an issue for a lot of, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 
a lot of people on, on how they're going to do it. How can I access my computer or say my dongle that's there? But I, it's one of those sports technology, you know, you now have to advance your technology based upon a circumstance. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. what, what do you think about that? Well, look, I think you have to advance it, but you have to have help. <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't know what you're doing with it, I mean, and that's where I think we're lucky to be able to help our customer base. That's keeping selfish about training, but I know what we've done to do that. And when people just, I look, when they come through it, I know we're not even forcing them. We're leading them to the water and it's just really good water. <laughs> you know, they drink a lot yeah. and they yeah. keep going back for more and Hey, 90% of the body, I guess. Um, yeah, I, that goes along. It's kind of like the binge conversation of technology. There's so many things that, well, gosh, you have to adapt at Lee. And I think about the brick and mortar conversation and, you know, from a standard classroom idea, I mean, my kid's school, you know, we just had our drive-by graduations in the last couple of days. My the, and and it's like an apocalypse, uh, the zombie apocalypse movie where you know coffee's still on the counter, food's still on the plate, everything's still in their desks. So one of the things they threw in the car was a bag of all the kids' junk, which was still there the day they never came back. So those that's a brick and mortar operation that went kaput. And I mean, there are a lot of people out here. Oh, we're just going to homeschool our kids from now on. Wow, you got to put the schools out of business, the social aspect and everything. Right. But it makes me think about stuff like that. That's education yeah. at a different level. And, you know, we have a classroom, and I've had previous classrooms around the world, but I'm I'm writing up stuff now for that page we were talking about and just saying, look, you know, in, in by August, we could either be completely locked down as a planet again, or I mean, depending on what news you watch each day of the week, or life could be really back to normal. And I'm all excited to be back or to be in our new classroom in our new space. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with that, but I, I agree with you that people have either been forced to or been coddled along to adapt. And I think they're, you know, we've also done, we, we've tried to t take people from from an environment where they might just be watching the, the talking head and not have the interactive component of it and making them a better solution by putting them into remote training where they can actually talk to the instructor, ask the questions they want. That's that's an adaptation that's, like I said, it's forced on our side, but it helps coddle them on their side. Coddle is probably not the best word, but it holds their hand through the process. And once they do it, then they realize they don't have to force. They can, they got a way to do it that's natural and learnable and digestible. Exactly. So on a personal level, I mean, I always ask this, but you know what? Talking to Keith Locker, I mean, I'm on my second beer. Just well, yeah. Typically, what I tell people is like, hey, the end of the conversation Chuck, Chuck. is when my when, is when my beer's gone. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, mine has been gone, and now I'm doing it again. So right. so on a personal side of it, I mean, what do you what have you been been watching? <laughs> Uh, so, so, well, okay. So we just finished, <clears throat> gosh, excuse me. We're, we're right in the middle of, of three series that are coming back soon. And we just watched the Joker the other night, the Joaquin Phoenix one, which yeah, crazy. Uh, so we just finished Westworld season three. Uh, we're watching, uh, the Kevin Costner series up in Montana, Yellowstone, oh, okay. which is really awesome. The Paramount Network, it's crazy because they come down and film here in Utah all the time. Spanish Forks, our neighboring town, they did the whole rodeo scene in the first season in the stadium, and people we know got to be in the stadium. We're like, how'd you pull that crap off? I'd have been there in a second. Uh, so Yellowstone, um, and another one I, I knew this much was true on HBO. I think it's called I Knew This Much Was True with, uh, what's his name? Garofalo that plays the Incredible Hulk in Marvel. He plays him in, himself and a twin brother. But we realized the other night that it's like we're real time. We're waiting on the next episode. We did Little Fires Everywhere uh, the other day, and that ran out. We Yeah, we just, a ton of them. I, yeah, I we done last, last, uh, last Kingdom is like, I keep, I, I, I keep talking like Uhtred. Uhtred, Ragnarsson, Uhtred Ragnarsson all the time. It's last weird. Kingdom, Outlander, I want to watch. Yeah, there's just a ton of it. And I think Isn't it, right? <laughs> we've probably been, like I said, it's either, I don't know why we do so much video, but that's, that's kind of our personal time at night. Kids go to bed. Me and Mom are going to go watch something on TV. <laughs> right. Right, yeah. exactly. So the last thing, so I don't want to keep you obviously, but uh, mm -hmm. tell us what I mean. What is something that people need to know? What I mean, what what is it as part of the the training that um, you know obviously is going to bring people to your training class? Oh gosh, there's a ton of things people should know. Um, one of them is the remote conversation we just had. The other one is the electronic documentation that I just showed you that we're springing on the world. Um, and the other one is more classes coming after we, uh, and so I'll just share this as, as part of general conversation. You know, we're doing a train the trainer event in a couple of weeks. It's been seven months. So our current cadre is in need, but we have a lot of new partners coming on around the world. And as I've told you, 
let's pretend life is back to normal and at the end of summer and the world's ready to go back to work full bore. I'm, I'm making sure that we're able to support that. You know, I, I can get up at two in the morning every week and do a class for Dubai, but I don't want to, you know, so I want, I want that ramp up. So I think the world should know, our customer base should know that the education to support what you're doing is there and the people to support what you need in your time zone or your locale or your support structure and your language will be there. And I mean, that's my job is to make sure we have those things in place. So know that, <laughs> know yeah, those yeah, things going forward. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. And uh, obviously appreciate all the hard work and all the good stuff, but Hey, you know what? You're always going to learn something, right? Every stinking day, just about every day. Right. So good. <laughs> So what we could do is uh, thank you. I appreciate your course. time. And it's a long weekend. So, of course, yes. you can yes. enjoy some of those. Or, you know, have the kids running around and all that great stuff. We should do this every Friday. I mean, I get to talk oh, to you dude. on a planned <laughs> call once a week, but that's no fun. That's just regular. I know. <laughs> right now, it's just you sit and drink. So it's fantastic. So thank okay. you very much. You're very welcome, Lee. Glad to be here. Hope you have a good, uh, safe weekend. And uh, we'll speak to you, what, Tuesday? You know it. Call any time. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. We'll okay. See ya. see ya. So, again, hope you enjoyed the forensic happy hour. And, hey, make sure you are back again uh, next week. We have a special guest. Well, they don't cancel. But, anyway, hey, if you want to be on the events or if you want to be on what this is called, the forensic happy hour, hey, right here, boom, show up. All right. See you next week.